Right now, McLaren are in an absolute disaster and are in a full crisis, which now leaves the future of the team and Fernando Alonso up in the air. So in today's video, I will analyse what the future holds for both Fernando Alonso and McLaren. But first, let's start with Fernando Alonso, who it's safe to say is not very happy. Because since he joined McLaren in 2015, all he has been given is false promises. False promises about how McLaren are going to be competing for race wins and world championships. When McLaren actually have designed some absolutely awful cars that Fernando has had to drive. And if we look at Alonso's stats at McLaren since 2015, it does really show how poor the McLaren has been. Since Fernando Alonso went back to McLaren in 2015, he's had no race wins, no pole positions, no podiums and only 122 points. That is simply not good enough and those four seasons have been poor. So if these poor results continue, which they will, what will Fernando do in the future? Well, if you look at it from McLaren's point of view, they are desperate to keep him at the team. One, because no matter what you think, he is still one of the best drivers in Formula 1. But another big reason why they want to keep Fernando is that he has made that car look a lot better than it actually is. For example, the 2018 Australian Grand Prix, he just held off the Red Bull of Max Verstappen. In a McLaren car that was way slower than the Red Bull. In Baku, he somehow scored points despite severely damaging his car on lap 1. And then in Austria, he finished 8th despite starting from the pit lane. And those great performances by Fernando again just show how great he is. But from Alonso's point of view, it makes absolutely no sense to stay at McLaren. Because the car literally, especially during this year, is getting worse over time, not better. And with the current power struggle going on at McLaren, I don't see why he would want to stay. As not only is the team falling to pieces, but also they don't really have a plan of what they're doing in the future. So if he is to leave McLaren but stay in Formula 1, where would he go? The first two options are Mercedes and Ferrari. And for me, there's no chance of him going to Mercedes 1 because of 2007. Because back then, Mercedes were big partners with McLaren and Fernando Alonso did burn a lot of bridges. And the second reason is that Lewis Hamilton will definitely not allow Fernando to be his teammate. Yes, Lewis is a lot more friendly with Fernando than they were in 2007, but trust me, he does not want him as a teammate. Because whether you like it or not, Mercedes is Lewis's team. And there's no chance for me of him going to Ferrari because of how the relationship ended in 2014. And just like with Hamilton, Sebastian Vettel will not allow Fernando to join him. Because at Ferrari, Sebastian Vettel is the clear number one end of story. And there is no way that Ferrari are going to ruin that by putting Fernando as his teammate. So if it's not Mercedes or Ferrari, what about a return to Renault? Where of course Fernando's only world titles came at the team. And to be honest, I don't think Renault would mind him coming back because again, the success that Fernando had with the team was great. And from Fernando's point of view, it makes total sense. Just look at the progress that Renault have made since they came back into F1 in 2016. In 2016, they were 9th, last year in 2017, they were 6th, and so far this year, they are 4th. So there you can see the clear progress that Renault are making. And with Renault a lot closer for sure than McLaren are to winning races, again, it would make sense from Fernando's point of view. But at the end of the day, I don't see Renault actually signing him. Because right now, Renault have two good drivers in Hülkenberg and Sainz who are performing well and helping to develop the car. And with the good performances that Hülkenberg and Sainz have put in, I do think Renault are keen to keep them. And another reason why I think Renault will and probably should not sign Alonso is because they have to move on from him. Even though the time that Fernando had with Renault was great, they cannot let his time be the only success the team has. And I think should try to build a new future with a new driver being their new star. Instead of constantly going back to the world to get the same driver that's drove twice for you in the past. And let's be honest, even if they sign Fernando Maximum, he is going to be in F1 until what, 2021? So for Renault, like they've been doing, they must think of the long term, not the short term. So from Renault's point of view, it is very logical to keep Carlos Sainz and Nico Hülkenberg at the team. And again, even though from Fernando's point of view, it'd be great from Renault's, it just wouldn't. And of course, from our point of view, the fans, we would love to see Fernando back in that Renault and doing a lot better. To maybe, who knows, get a last podium or a last race win to prove how good he really is. But again, if I'm being honest, I don't think he's going back to Renault. So if he's not going to Mercedes, Ferrari or Renault, where is he going? 
Well, it's pretty simple. He's either going to do the World Endurance Championship or he's going to IndyCar. Now, if he continued in work like he has this year, it would make total sense because he is in the best car in that series and is always going to win the races. But Fernando has already achieved his dream of winning the 24-hour Le Mans race. So because of that, is there really any point of staying there? I don't think there is. And that's why I think it's likely and I think he will be going to IndyCar for 2019. Mainly because Fernando wants to win the Indy 500. Let's be honest, that's all he wants to do. Yes, if he won the IndyCar title, that would be great. But I don't actually think he cares about that. All he wants to do is win the Indy 500 so he can complete the Triple Crown. And if Fernando is still 100% serious about this goal, then he is definitely going to America next year. And if Fernando is going to Indy, hopefully he does achieve that Triple Crown. Because of all the bad luck and all the bad cars he has driven at McLaren, he does deserve it. And it would be so awesome to see such a great racing driver achieve that. And could also, if you believe the rumours, be racing for the McLaren IndyCar team. And talking of McLaren, let's get into them. A team right now who is struggling just so, so bad. And also a team that must start winning races again. Not only for its own sake, but also Formula 1's, because F1 does need McLaren competing for wins again. Because since Bruce McLaren created the team over 50 years ago, they have been a massive part of the history of Formula 1. Just take a look at these stats. Since they started in F1, they have 182 race wins and 155 pole positions, with 391 podiums and over 5,000 points. And have also won 12 drivers titles and 8 constructors titles. With 834 races completed and 53 seasons completed. That there just shows you how successful McLaren have been. And they've also had great drivers win titles with the team. Drivers such as Emerson Fittipaldi, James Hunt, Nicky Lauda and Alain Prost. And let's not also forget Ayrton Senna, Mika Hakkinen and Lewis Hamilton. And that's not even counting the other legends that have never won titles for McLaren. Drivers like Gilles Villeneuve, Keke Rosberg, Gerhard Berger and Nigel Mansell. And also other greats like Kimi Raikkonen, Fernando Alonso and Jensen Button. And those stats right there with all the great drivers that have drove for the team just shows you how great a team McLaren is. But unfortunately right now for McLaren they are nowhere near achieving that success. And with the way the team's going, this is one of the lowest points of their history. But let's not forget, in their history, they haven't always been great. For example, when the team first got going, they weren't really that good. As in their first five years, it was only really minor success. Despite finishing second in the Constructors in 1967. But I think we can all let McLaren off for this, because at the end of the day, they were a new team. Let's not forget, between 1978 and 1983, that was a rough patch. And even though in 1982 they did finish second in the Constructors' Championship, they weren't that great during this period. And at times they were really struggling. And then another dip came between 1994 and 1997. Where after the days of Ayrton Senna and their partnership with Honda, they were rebuilding the team. And were building up a new relationship with Mercedes. So considering that, I think it's understandable why they weren't that good during this period. And from 2013 to right now, they are in another rough patch. But after those rough periods we just looked at, how did they start winning again? To be honest, it's quite simple. Great people with a strong personality led the team forward. For example, after the sad death of Bruce McLaren, Teddy Mayer had to take over the team. In what at the time was a very difficult thing to do considering those circumstances. But despite that, he went on to give McLaren their first real success in Formula 1 as they won the title in 1974 and 1976 with Emerson Fittipaldi and James Hunt. But in the late 70s, McLaren went downhill again, meaning that someone had to replace Teddy Mayer and lead the team forward. That man would be Ron Dennis, who not only led the team into more success, but their most successful period in their history, between 1984 and 1993. And even in the mid-90s, when times again got tough, he led the team forward again as they went on to win titles and races with Mika Hakkinen and Lewis Hamilton. But then in 2009, Ron Dennis let Martin Whitmarsh run the team. But when Whitmarsh failed to get the job done and win some world titles, he was replaced as well, with Ron Dennis once again returning, but this time it was different. He did not lead the team into another successful period. He actually made the team worse, thus leading to Ron Dennis being replaced by Zach Brown. 
And when Zac Brown replaced Honda with Renault as McLaren's engine supplier, what could possibly go wrong? Embarrassing. Really embarrassing. I'm afraid that everything is the answer. So from all of the examples I just gave right there, I guess what I'm trying to say is that McLaren need a new person with a great and strong personality to lead the team forward. But whoever that new person is, he is going to have a lot of issues. The team personnel at the top is just not good enough. And I think some of them are out of their depth, honestly, at a top team in F1. For the last three or four years, they're actually lacking in sponsorship. That is just not good enough. They have not had a world-class designer since Adrian Newey left the team in 2006, which again, not good enough. And their star driver, Fernando Alonso, is severely demotivated and does not want to be there. So obviously those are the issues that need to be fixed, but what does the future hold for them going up to say 2021? Up to 2021, all I see is more and more and more poor results. But honestly, eventually I do think McLaren will start winning again. They can't go this long without winning. This team is way too big not to win races and this team is way too big not to challenge again. But massive changes at the team have to be made to make this possible. Because if they're not, the McLaren just won't win a race again. It's that simple. But what about this possible IndyCar entry from McLaren? Well, really, there's two reasons why they would want to do this. One is to try and finally win races again. And then also to promote the brand of McLaren better instead of what they're doing in Formula 1. Because their results in F1 is not promoting their brand very well at all. And I think a small part of this is to support Fernando Alonso in winning the Indy 500. And McLaren definitely want him to win it in a McLaren. Because for their brand it would be absolutely brilliant. But in the long term I don't think an IndyCar entry will be good. Because at the end of the day F1 is their bread and butter. And if you gave McLaren the option of being successful in F1 or Indy they're going to take F1. F1 is what McLaren was built for, and surely entering IndyCar would distract massively from what they're doing in Formula 1. So in the long term, I don't think an IndyCar entry is really that good at all. Also, another thing that McLaren must stop doing, and it's just further embarrassing what is at the end of the day a great team. And really with these preseason names, they're turning McLaren into a laughing stock because you know they're not going to achieve them. So when you make a name in preseason, just make it realistic. So at least if you achieve those aims, you can say that you had a good season. And right now with the car that they have, McLaren should be aiming to be top of the midfield. And even though McLaren are such a big team, they have no right to be at the top of that midfield battle. Because if you strip away all the money and all the resources that McLaren have, for the last few years, they have been one of the worst teams in F1. Thus why the situation at McLaren just continues to get worse. So they must start to improve right now. Because if they don't, then McLaren will be a laughing stock for many years to come. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I will be back at the same time tomorrow with another video. And also, don't forget to join the Chazza HDF1 community over on Discord. The link is down in the description. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what do you think about the future of McLaren and Fernando Alonso. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time it's been me Chazza HD, goodbye.